Today, we welcome to the program Jake Angeli Chansley, who's a spiritual activist, shamanic practitioner, published author, entrepreneur, known to many in our audience, I'm sure, as the Q shaman or QAnon shaman. He was convicted and served some time for his role in the January 6th Trump riots, which I am sure we will also talk about. I really appreciate your time and you being here. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I think it's more like uh, the deep state set up riots than Trump riots. I don't think Trump had people do that. I think it was more likely that the feds and the crowd and Antifa and BLM were largely responsible and the police throwing tear gas and concussion grenades into a peaceful crowd that probably had something to do with it, too. Well, hold on. Let's let's go through piece by piece because we'll, we we have plenty of time to get to everything if we just do it sequentially. So you, in in court through your lawyers, as I reviewed the records, to some degree, you made the case that you were there because of Trump. Right. So I'm interested in this conflict between clearly Trump did motivate you to be there, but also you're saying it was Antifa and the FBI. But aren't you evidence that that's not the case, Jake? Well, my previous lawyer misrepresented me uh, in pretty much every single way. Ah, so, you denounced you know, the arguments made by your lawyer. Well, yeah, on a number wow. of different occasions, he said things that I never asked him to say. I never felt duped by Trump, never said that I'm not mentally ill, not bipolar, schizophrenic, you know, delusional or, you know, depressed. None of that's true. OK, so your view as of today, regardless of the argument that was made in court, is that the the events of January 6th were carried out by tell me which groups it was again? Well, it's actually if you look at it objectively, yes. and you look at the setup that was very clearly there from a very early, early stage prior to January 6th, what you're going to find is that largely the parties responsible would be people like Mitch McConnell, Nancy Pelosi, Yogananda Pittman, Mark Milley in the Pentagon, Christopher Ray in the FBI, and people in Antifa and BLM. Uh, how do you know that any of that is true? What evidence do you have, for example, that Nancy Pelosi was involved in what happened that day? Well, because if you look into the testimony of former Capitol Police Chief Sund, he had his emergency powers revoked by Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell prior to the January 6th events. And they had to go uh, he had to go through them in order to deploy the National Guard. And when he gave the written uh, request for National Guard to be present, they denied it because it would be bad optics and there was lack of evidence. But the evidence was all there. He was just not given the evidence by Yogananda Pittman, by the FBI and by the Pentagon. And that's according to his own testimony. That's also according to the testimony of former Capitol Police Lieutenant Tarek Johnson. Yeah, I've reviewed their testimony and was not able to, to find that it's sort of beyond the scope of this interview to, to look at it line by line. I guess big picture, Jake, why do you think that parties that supported Joe Biden would try to interfere with Joe Biden being made president? Why would they do that? It seems counterproductive, doesn't it? Well, the thing is, is what you have to understand is that it was about creating a setup so that a psyop may ensue and the weaponization of the Justice Department, the DOJ, could then be used to go after Trump and his supporters. But that's it's just about, a word salad, Jake. It doesn't address the crux of the question, does it? No, it does. It does. How? And, and just allow me allow me to address it. So because of the events of January 6th, there have yeah. been multitudes, thousands of Trump supporters that have been labeled domestic terrorists and because, because they showed that, up and committed crimes, though. Right. Well, or you're well, saying well, they no, were tricked into not, doing so. But with respect, David, that's not the same thing as committing acts of domestic terrorism in the way that there has been acts of domestic terrorism committed, say, for two over 200 days all over the country during the 2020 riots by Antifa and BLM, who claimed in their own um, on their own websites that they wanted to overthrow the but American Jake, capital. That's a non sequitur. That's I have government. to interrupt, so, Jake. I have to interrupt, Jake, because what you have to understand is imagine that I was accused of attempted murder. It is of no importance whatsoever if a year prior 
someone else somewhere, someone else somewhere else also tried to kill someone. It, I can't use that as my defense. And what you're saying is that part of the defense of what the people on January 6th did is your perception of what BLM did a year earlier. That's not a, that's not a valid defense. No, no. What I'm saying, dude, is this. OK, what we're talking about here is optics. OK, and they tried to make me in particular look as bad as humanly possible. They used all sorts of trigger words and trigger images to put a label on me and many other Trump supporters to circumvent our constitutional rights and to basically centralize power and use the levers of power in government to go after their political opponents. OK, let me ask you a real practical question fascists. about that. You're talking exactly. about being designated domestic terrorists. I want to be super specific here because I really want to understand your view on this. Um, these cases, cases like yours were federal cases. There is no official designation of domestic terrorism by the U.S. federal government. So who labeled you as such and where? The Mockingbird media did all over the news, number one. And number two, are you telling me that when, say, the government is designating play, uh, uh, institutions like, say, the Proud Boys or the Oath Keepers as domestic terrorist groups or anybody, for that matter, that was flying into D.C.? I don't know if you're aware, but anybody that true. flew into D.C. in early January of 2021 is now being followed around by the U.S. Marshals on airplanes. And there are no U.S. Marshals on, on the FAA, uh, on okay. the airplanes all across Jake. the country because of this label. You're you're doing a lot of what about ism and changing topics. This isn't what let's about just try. Hold on, Jake. Hold on. Let, let's let, let's let's conduct this interview in a, in a sensible way. OK, let's stick with one of the things you said. When we finish with it, we'll go to the next thing. OK, you said that many of the people charged for their alleged involvement on January 6th have been designated as domestic terrorists by the weaponized DOJ. I then said to you, there is no such designation by the U.S. government in the legal proceedings that you're talking about. So what do you mean they were designated domestic terrorists by the weaponized DOJ? You said, well, the Mockingbird media did it. So are you no, ready? Uh, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, you hold talked on. about me. Let me finish the question. You said who finish. labeled you that? Fine. And that's what I'm saying. Well, the Mockingbird media. You, did. you first said that the weaponized DOJ issued that label. When I told you no such label exists, you said it was actually the media. So no, from a legal no, standpoint, I, no, dude, no you're, one you're, has you're, designated you're mixing you it up. That's not the case at all. OK, what it is that I was saying, tell was me that again. what it is that I'm saying is that the DOJ has yeah. labeled numerous Trump supporters that were there on January 6th and some people that weren't even there on January 6th as domestic terrorists and you labeled can them look how into, and where. And, hold, and I'll, I'll tell you, you can look into the testimony of Stephen Friend, the FBI whistleblower who came forward and was talking about how it is that the FBI is designating these people as domestic terrorists and then handing these cases to FBI field offices all over the country as, instead of treating it like it was one incident on one day at one location. And in this way, they're actually expanding their domestic terrorism uh, investigations all over the country, creating the illusion that there is some sort of domestic terrorism threat from right. white Trump supporters. Listen, we're, it seems as though we're I don't want to spend the whole interview on this. As of two weeks ago, none of the individuals involved in the January 6th riots have been designated as domestic terrorists at the at there is no specific domestic terrorism statute. And none of the individuals that you're referring to have actually been designated in that way by the DOJ that well, people well, have heard on, your well, opinion. What, hold what, on. But David, people heard about, your opinion. On, now they've heard mine. What about the terrorism enhancements that are being placed on their plea deals? Are you telling me that that isn't a classification? It's there just is no such classification. If you no, want to give but, me a but, specific but case, is, Jake, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. These terrorism enhancements on their plea deals. I, I would be glad to look at that and give my opinion. But you made a different claim to start with. That's a different claim altogether. OK, it's just a different claim. It's just not the claim. Let me ask you this. You've said that some of the things said by your lawyer during your trial are not things you agreed with. Fine. Do you acknowledge that you did something wrong on that day and that you are the sole person responsible for that? 
Yes, I've said that on several occasions. If you do your research, I've accepted responsibility. I've said that I broke the law. I should not have broken the law. And I've done my time. And, you know, I'm out now because I did my time and I had good time and good behavior in prison. Just so you know, there's like a rattle going in the background. I don't know if you hear that. Oh, it just no. Um, do you blame anyone other than yourself for inducing and trapping or goading you into doing what you did on that day? Not at all. Just plain and simple. You don't blame anybody else. No, I take full responsibility for my actions. OK, when it comes to some of the views that you have been associated with, I've seen again, and this is from things your lawyer has said. So you tell me if you don't agree that you have distanced yourself from like the QAnon shaman stuff. You're you now you don't consider yourself a follower of QAnon. Like, is that true? Well, QAnon is a label and a straw man created by the Mockingbird Media, and they called me QAnon shaman and had the audacity to say that's what I called myself. So what I'm asking you is just about the views, that, not the label. Well, 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 dude, that really all depends on what you think Q views are. What do okay. you think Q views are? I think the biggest overriding view is that there is a sort of um, conspiracy of child abuse and pedophilia that is carried out by so-called elites, the deep state and Democrats, which Donald Trump was chosen by God to become president and then stop. OK, so I don't necessarily agree with all of that, but okay. if you look into Jeffrey Epstein in what he was doing, if you look into the finders, if you look into the Franklin cover up, if you look into the testimony of Ronald Bernard, if you look into the Barney Frank scandal, if you look into the Michael Aquino military uh, base scandals, if you look into the numerous scandals that are coming out now regarding all these people that debunked Pizzagate and now they're on they're being arrested and charged with child porn charges and child abuse charges, then it's quite clear that there is some sort of an elite sex trafficking pedophilia ring in D.C. in Hollywood. If you look into the testimony of uh, Corey Feldman, if you look into the testimony of a lot of these young people that were groomed in Hollywood and raped at young ages, then it's quite clear that there is some sort of elite child sex trafficking going on. So you do believe that? Long... Well, you don't? No, I've not seen any evidence of that whatsoever. So, so I just gave you all of these facts. I just gave you all these things that you can look up. And if you don't look it up, you're not doing your due diligence as a journalist. Well, we can look up. So this is what's called the setting small fires conundrum. OK, uh, I have investigated Pizzagate and QAnon to a degree that I think is completely reasonable and have looked at some but not all of the things you just mentioned. The thing that becomes difficult is you are extremely skeptical of accepting any official source for any claim. But at the same time, you argue that if I'm not familiar with every proverbial small fire that you've just set, that certainly what you're saying must be true, even though you're also not citing any sources for these things. It's tough to have a real conversation when when someone does that, you know? Well, look into the government website on the on the finders that this has been declassified. The okay. CIA was trafficking children for satanic ritual abuse, keeping them in cages. They were abducting children off the street. And this was uh, the whistle was blown right. by. The I'll look FBI. into that. OK, I'll look now, into now, that. Now, now, now look into the Franklin cover up. That's where um, the rising Republican star Lawrence King was trafficking children out of CPS and forcing them into satanic rituals while they did cocaine and molested children. OK, look into the Lieutenant Colonel Michael Aquino in charge of psychological warfare and mind control for the army. Look into his scandals on military bases. Listen, look we into can't the possibly scandal. do all of these things here. What I will well, no, tell no, you I'm is, just, but hold on, just you. as an example, this is we have to do this in a way that makes sense for the audience, Jake. OK, so okay. if you want to come back, give me the full list of stuff and we can investigate it. The one I've investigated that you mentioned is the Franklin conspiracy. There is essentially no credible evidence that what you just described is going on. It has has been investigated deeply. There are there are documents people can find. We can't make this about Franklin conspiracy. You mentioned one I'm familiar with. And what I'm telling you is everything you've said is disputed and, in my opinion, not backed by evidence. Let okay. me get to the second part. You believe a bunch of the first stuff I said. Do you believe Trump was sent by God to solve that problem? I don't necessarily think that that is a accurate portrayal of I think that we're all here on God's will. 
but I'll say that much. OK, do you think Trump maybe was sent by God to deal with it? Dude, I think everybody was sent here by God to do something. OK, but you have no evidence that Trump was sent here specifically to stop the ring of pedophilia you just described. <laughs> no, what kind of evidence would there be? I don't know. I mean, I guess the same kind you're citing for all this other stuff, which is. Oh, none. <laughs> give me a break. David. OK, hey, um, couple. So you're now running for a, a congressional seat. Um, talk to me about what is the platform? What are you bringing to the table? Why would you be a good member of Congress? Because I'm actually going to represent the American people. The first four things that I'm going to introduce to the House floor is a single bill voting law, an amendment for term limits for congressmen and staff, a criminalization of lobbying and seven figure fines, expulsion and prosecution for insider trading. And believe me, there's a much longer list to go along with that. But those are the first four things I intend to do. Do you think that your criminal past is going to be useful or maybe hurtful in this campaign? Well, the fact of the matter is I don't have a criminal past. I have one felony for which that is the only crime I've ever committed in my life. And no, I don't think it's going to be a hindrance whatsoever. Why not? Don't don't you think that it's something that may make people say, well, hold on a second. Is this a, is this the sort of person we want representing us? Well, you know, considering that all the people that are, quote unquote, representing the American people right now are probably criminals themselves with considering all the insider trading and all the cocaine and orgies that then all the hookers that they hire, then, right. you know, I probably don't see that that is going to be a problem at all. All right. Well, we're going to follow it with interest. A couple of the things I want to talk about, you know, uh, I, I don't want to simply and flippantly ascribe the label conspiracy theorist to you because it can sometimes be a label that just stops conversation and I want to have a conversation. But I do want to ask you about some other beliefs and see sort of like what is the network of beliefs? You've talked to us a little bit about QAnon. Do it has been said by prosecutors that you believe you are an alien or a higher being of some kind. Is that true? Is that a belief you hold? As a shamanic practitioner, I have a hyperdimensional consciousness that stretches far beyond the bounds of my physical body. So that's a yes, it sounds like. Um, well, do you know what a bodhisattva is? I uh, generally speaking, yeah, sort of okay, a spiritual so figure of sorts that people may follow. Yeah, well, kind of. It's it's a spiritual being that attends a certain level of enlightenment, but reincarnates over and over again consciously until the all of humanity is enlightened and brought into an ascended level of consciousness. I am a bodhisattva. All right. So it sounds like you do believe you are a higher being of sorts. Well, I think we all have the capacity to be, quote unquote, higher beings. I think we all are higher beings. Um, oh. I'm just more conscious of it than others. Fair. When it comes to vaccination, I read and correct me if I'm wrong, that you were discharged from the military for refusing an anthrax vaccination. I'm curious, are you assuming that's true? And you'll tell me if it's not. Are you against all vaccines or only certain ones? Well, uh, what I'm against is trusting people that have openly espoused their eugenic beliefs to manufacture vaccines for the mass populations of the planet. And considering the Rockefeller family and considering people like Bill Gates, who are behind a lot of these vaccines, are admitted eugenicists, I don't trust them one little bit at all of, uh, to give me or anybody a vaccine. So it's not that you reject the science of vaccination as a principle, the inoculation. You just don't like who's making the vaccines because you believe that they have genocidal goals. Um, the principle behind vaccines is sound for the most okay. part. However, the um, the ingredients that are being put in modern vaccines by these eugenicist owned companies are right. detrimental to human health. Like what what ingredient? Oh, things like, you know, formaldehyde, things like dead fetal tissue, things like, you know, mercury based compounds that penetrate the blood brain barrier, uh, all sorts of stuff that's in there. Preservatives for the microbiological life forms. There's all sorts of stuff in these vaccines. Just look at the list and look at the ingredients. But you know in that. I mean, again, vaccines. Jacob, we can't do every single one of these. But like the dead fetal tissue in vaccines, you know that that's not true. There were stem cell lines obtained 
uh, from fetal tissue used to research and develop the vaccines. But you're suggesting like they're injecting a piece of a dead baby into everybody. That's crazy. You've got to see that that's crazy. No, no. You see, you're clearly not doing your research, but that's OK. I'm not I've researched. You Tell me where I'm wrong. Debate you, debate you on it right now, which I'm sorry. You said you, you're not equipped to debate me on that right now. No, no. What I'm saying is that because of our time constraints, dude, I'll yeah. argue into the ninth hour. But, you know, our time constraints won't allow it. But what you're to be clear, I'm saying pieces of dead babies are not an ingredient in the vaccines. You're saying that they are. No, what I'm saying is dead fetal tissue. Yes. As in cells from dead babies. Tissue. Right. Okay, it's are it's used, part of a dead are baby. Used, yeah. And that and dude, that and that also goes into our food that goes into our food as well. So it's like, don't you know, you don't don't you can't deny it. The science is there. This is what these pharmaceutical com companies do. OK, uh, I think it can be denied on the basis that there's there's no evidence for it. But it sounds like we're not necessarily. Yeah, that's agree. what they say about the election, too. <laughs> right. You know, I think Joe Biden won. That's true. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you do. Yeah. Hey, in the limited time we have left, um, do you regret what you did on January 6th? Aside from I know you've said, you know, you, you've already talked a little bit about it and you said you're responsible, et cetera. Would everybody have been better off, including you, if you had just never gone on that day? Um, I think everybody in the country would be better off if the government didn't set things up the way that they did. Um, do but I did have they regrets? set you up to go? Because you've taken responsibility. You went because you wanted to go. So why is it if that they, now you blame the government? I know what I'm saying, dude, is that it was a setup on behalf of the deep state. If they allowed the National Guard to be there, it never would have happened. OK. And n regarding my n this notion of regrets, I don't regret anything in life, even though I've made several mistakes, because regret is far too heavy a burden hmm. to carry forward into the future. You know, you can either make a mistake and not learn from it or you can make a mistake and learn from it. And then at that point, it's not a mistake. It's a lesson. And I've learned many lessons throughout my life and I am better for it. Are there any lessons you learned from being there on January 6th that are about you rather than about like, I know you could very easily say, well, I learned how powerful the deep state is. OK, that's a dead end for our conversation. Are there any lessons about you that you learned from having been there that day? Yeah. And what lesson is that? That I'm far stronger than I could have possibly imagined and God is guiding me in every single footstep I take. All right. Uh, I think that that is a good note to end our interview on. We've been speaking with Jake Angeli Chansley, who is not only a spiritual activist, but also now running for Congress. Jake, I appreciate your time. We don't have to agree on everything for the conversation to be useful, and we're going to be following your campaign very closely. Sounds good. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Take care.